Welcome to the Daddy Hood Rocks podcast with John Wolford and Brandon Miller. We are here to encourage you, empower you, and strengthen you so you can engage, level up, and have fun being a dad. We are going to have guests, deep conversations, hilarious stories, and insights that will give you the strength you need so you can be the dad you gotta be. And now, here are your hosts, John Wolford and Brandon Miller. Welcome to another episode of the Daddy Hood Rocks podcast. We're here to help you engage, level up, and have fun being a dad. And I am Brandon Miller, and this is... I am no longer the utter understudy, John Wolford. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, then what shall we call you? Uh, I think we'll just go with the wolf. The wolf, I like it. So the, the pod father and the wolf. All right, when you were, first were saying I'm no longer the the understudy i i thought you were i I was thinking wwe i thought you were gonna say i'm no longer the undertaker sorry that's where my (laughs) mind went it is sad because he has left (laughs) yes yes kind of you know a grave undertaking really but uh but truly we are all about the dad jokes here but this is episode number three john and we we're so excited because each week have you noticed this we've gotten better as far as our sound quality goes, our picture quality goes, because this is new territory for us. We've never really done a podcast, uh, you know, whether it's just the audio part or the video part. So it's new stuff. But uh, man, this week I'm excited to introduce one of the top 50 killer trumpet players, uh, according to thewoodshed.com. Uh, my friend Tito Carrillo, uh, he plays the trumpet. He's a jazz trumpet professor at the University of Illinois uh, at Urbana-Champaign. And more than that, he's he's a friend of ours, of, of my family. Uh, we met him and his beautiful wife and wonderful children when we moved here to Champaign, Illinois, a handful of years ago, and did some work with them uh, as far as uh, some church work. But more, more importantly, just good, good friends. And they've been with us through different stages of this journey. And so, yeah, top 50 living trumpet players. That's pretty cool. But also, I'd have to say, as good as he is as a trumpet player, I think he's even better as a dad. Just a hunch. All right. Yeah, I mean, he, he's incredible. And uh, I'm excited for our listeners to be able to peek into his life um, and his ability to father um, intentionally and um, honestly beautifully yes uh you know his trumpet playing is beautiful but uh the way he fathers is um even more beautiful oh without a doubt man well very cool so so he has you know some some big accolades some uh big ticket items on his resume so to speak so john you you have some big ticket items in your mind right um i mean that's a good way to uh, exaggerate, but uh, I do have quite the story for you, Brandon. All right. So Let's hear uh, it. a couple of years ago, um, so most of you don't know, I live in South Bend, Indiana, or at least that general area, and uh, the University of Notre Dame's close. And so going to Notre Dame uh, sporting events is very popular in my family. Uh, I have the Notre Dame monogram tattooed on my leg. Um, but uh, we're at a hockey game, my sons and I are, about two years ago now, and my son Denver had to go to the bathroom. Coincidentally, so did I. So I took him to the bathroom. He went to the bathroom. I said, okay, buddy, just stand here, turn around. Daddy's going to go to the bathroom real quick. Bathroom's crowded. Um, and so I start going to the bathroom, and all of a sudden I hear, Dad, your penis is big and mine is little. Oh no. <laughs> he just said that in a crowded bathroom. I, I hear laughter from just about everywhere in this bathroom at this point. And so I finished my business and realized that I now have to open this door into this crowded bathroom of men who just heard my, um, at that time, what three year old son exclaim that my penis is big and his is little. Um, so, long story short, thankfully, Um, I did open the door and the guys were uh, receptive and they (laughs) they all, they all laughed, laughed about it. And um, of course I had to make the joke that kids sure know how to exaggerate. Uh, But uh, yeah, it was uh, certainly the uh, 
most interesting experience uh, I've probably had in a public place. <laughs> Man, and that, that was the long-awaited joke for, for this week, so thank you for sharing that. Yeah, not as funny, not as embarrassing as that, but a couple of years ago, probably about three years ago, so my oldest at that time was um, four-ish, five-ish, and we were at the mall here in town, and uh, we were on our way to, you know, I was going to get coffee, he was going to get some hot chocolate or ha- apple juice or something, and he's very thoughtful. He's just always, you know, thinking about stuff and things. And as we were walking in a very crowded area in the middle of the mall, right in front of the coffee area, he said, daddy, you have a penis too, right? <laughs> as a matter of fact, I do son. Yes, I do. <laughs> so obviously he was, well, he was thinking about his dangling participle and I uh, wanted to make sure that he, he wanted to confirm the the obvious yeah and you know going along with that last night we were actually um we were talking and uh we were explaining i'm i'm divorced and so there's different rules at daddy's house than there are at mommy's house and so um denver the same son says yeah we can say booty and butt at your house and i said yeah you, you certainly can he said and we can say penis and i said yeah you can and my stepdaughter chimes in she goes can i say penis too <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why you have a reason to say it, but I—I I, I mean, I guess. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, I, you know, our mindset here, and it obviously is with you too. You know, our our, our philosophy on that is let's call them anatomically correct yeah. terms, and, and you know, don't call it something that's you know uh, kind of silly or goofy just because you're uncomfortable talking about it. Uh, you know, I, it, I always cringe to be honest when I hear. You know, moms or dads say, all right, take out your wee wee or uh, yeah. whatever they want to call it. So, you know what? It's a penis, it's a vagina. Just call it what it is and go on with your day, you know, and help your kids learn to to not, you know, have to call it, a, a you know, a little uh, a pet name of some sort that they'll be embarrassed about later on. When they're in high school and they're having to talk to their doctor about, you know, uh, sorry, doc, I, you know, somehow I got hurt and hurt my wee wee. It's like, you know, how old are you? Yeah. So. Well, you know, and having worked in the emergency department and seeing um, various cases come in, sadly, um, you know, it's not always clear. Um, and and for the record, it needs to be anatomically correct. And so when a child says, um, you know, oh, oh, sir, so-and-so touched my cupcake, nobody knows what that means, right. you know? And so if we can teach our kids the anatomically correct terms, then we know when there's something wrong in their life. Without a doubt. So just the more precise you can be, more clear it is to everybody that needs to know. Without a doubt. All right, man. Well, with that said, uh, you know, I I don't know exactly how we can switch gears from that (laughs) to Tito Carrillo, but uh, you will not be disappointed in listening to his interview. So, So hang on tight. And I listen to Tito Carrillo from Champaign, Illinois. All right. We are so excited for our guest today. We are with the absolutely unique Tito Carrillo. And you and I have uh, been friends for a handful of years, uh, living in the same town in central Illinois. Tito, welcome to the Daddy Hood Rocks podcast. We're so excited to have you. Would you please introduce us to our listeners? Just talk about your family, your your work, uh, just and yourself. What would you like to put out there on the table for our listeners? Sure, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited that you have this new podcast and this new framework for for dads. Um, Let me just start by saying a little bit about me. I'm... um, I, I'm a professor of music at the University of Illinois. I play jazz. I played the trumpet. And that's, uh, I, I actually built my career in Chicago and then got this opportunity um, uh, in Urbana. Uh, I've been married 22 years to an absolute queen. Her name is Sara. She's originally from Honduras. And uh, we're happily married. I have four children. I'll actually start with the youngest. My youngest is nine years old, Elian. Uh, then I have three teenagers. That's right. Theo is 13. Elena, my only daughter, is 15. 
and my oldest son Diego just turned 18 yesterday. So I have an 18 year old now, which I can't believe. <laughs> so so um, we're uh, we're you know super happy um, here in Urbana. Uh, what else? To, what else to? What else would you like to know there? So as far as your your musical career, uh, just a quick thumbnail elevator. Yeah. Uh, speech. What? Where has your career taken you? What does it look like now? Where have you toured musically? Who have you played with? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like a lot right now due to something going on out there in the, in the air. But uh, but uh, yeah, us musicians are struggling. But uh, yes, I, I went to school to study uh, trumpet, and then I ended up moving to Chicago as a 23 year old to start my career. I ended up. Uh, building a career there where I got to play with the likes of Phil Collins, uh, did a tour with, with, with his big band. Uh, I got to play with Quincy Jones. Those are two of the, the, the bigger uh, acts that I got to play with and a, a whole bunch of other jazz artists uh, in and around Chicago and then doing some touring as well. I've never been uh, hardcore touring type and those, those two acts were probably the, uh, the longest tours I've ever done. But uh, around that, what's amazing is around that time, I, I actually had uh, kind of a spiritual awakening, you could say, and, and I, I, uh, I uh, became a Christian. And that's, I almost immediately got married, I'd say about two weeks after that happened. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, I don't know, my, my whole uh, framework in terms of what the place that music had in my life now was a little bit different and, and far healthier, to be honest with you, whereas it used to be kind of the, the number one thing in my life. You know, I just had a, a definite change of heart, change of mind, and, and family really became important to me, which is challenging for a musician because when you are, have been working to become a musician for so many years, uh, the idea is that eventually you want to hit it big, which means you're going to be touring, uh, you know, maybe six, seven months, eight months out of the year, if you can. That's like the dream, right? But uh, the taste of touring that I did have actually showed me the opposite, that that, that was going to be a really tough life for just the direction that I wanted to grow in. So I had to figure out a way to pivot where I could uh, still make a living uh, doing what I love to do, but support the family that we wanted to have. And that's where teaching came into play and played a much more prominent role. So as of today, I've been here at the University of Illinois full-time jazz trumpet professor for 14 years. That's and awesome. I, I love my job. There are not very many jobs like the one I have in the country, they're very highly competitive, and I'm just uh, so blessed and thankful to have something. And uh, especially now, I got a lot of my my brothers and sisters, musicians out there who are hurting since uh, there are pretty much no live gigs right now. So now that makes sense. Listening to you talk and talk about your life experience and um, how that transitioned into a family role, and so you've got these children and a wide range of children. How do you intentionally connect with them at their um, levels of interest and development? Yeah, that's a that's a question that I've I've spent eighteen years uh, trying to <laughs> answer definitely. Um, uh, I will I will tell you that uh, I think early on I um, I uh, kind of had an idea of what a dad should look like somewhat, in, in my own kind of um, uh, ignorant, blinded self a little bit. And, and uh, I think as I've, uh, as the years have gone by, I've learned to recognize that each child has its own unique personality. And you really, uh, rather than try to, to fight that and, and, and shape and mold them into something that they're not, it's, it's, it's actually way uh, better for your relationship and for your sanity, frankly, <laughs> to to actually recognize that these young these young children actually see the world through different lenses than I do, right? And uh, and so um, you know, one system that I've over the last uh, I'd say three or four years now that's really helped me. Uh, if you've heard of the Enneagram uh, personality system, it's a typing system that has really had a huge impact 
on me. Now, the, the idea with this is you're not supposed to type other people. But of course, as I got into it, I started like learning about all of the nine types. And, um, and so I, I've started to recognize certain patterns in my children. And I, and I realized that, oh, yeah, my, my oldest son is this exuberant. It's a, he's a type seven, but he's this always looking for adventure the, and always wants to be where the party's at. This, this COVID business has been a huge downer for him. It's been really a, a trying time for him to be locked behind a, a Zoom meeting all day, you know. Um, and then my daughter is uh, more of the peacemaker of our mm-hmm. family. With all of these boys, you know, these ram- rambunctious people, she's the one much more calm, much more into one-on-one time. She really, really responds well to that. Um, uh, Teo, my my 13-year-old, uh, is the athlete. He's the one with energy, and he's also the one always kind of ready for an argument. In fact, with him, it's kind of like a, it, I, I think it, it, it's kind of like a love thing, to be honest with you, you know, like <laughs> get into an argument with him, like he kind of respects that, you know, and, <laughs> and so I know that I can actually be much more forward with him and much more brutally honest with him because he kind of won't respect it if you're not. And that's very different from my daughter, for example. And then my son is like, it's kind of like my oldest, I'm sorry, my nine-year-old son, Elian, is kind of like my 18-year-old son, Diego, except on steroids, meaning he's always looking for adventure. He's got this monkey mind constantly looking for the next thing. And I I just kind of got to slow him down and say, son, take a breath, you know, but um but so, so you know, uh, these are the things that you have to learn how to connect with each child on their level, meet them on their level. And, and it's tough, especially when your personality might be quite different. Now, just as you're getting used to these uh, Enneagram types for your, uh, your children, all of a sudden you're getting ready for another transition. So Diego, your oldest, the one who's thirsty for adventure, he's going to be graduating soon. And not sure exactly what his plans are, but how are you as parents, how are you as a dad preparing for that major transition? I mean, that's a major life change for everybody involved. How are you prepping for that? Well, absolutely. It's a major life change. And uh, it's it, it's funny. Um, you asked me that question and it makes me think, it makes me realize how little I've actually thought about at least how I'm going to respond to it. And the reason I say that is because my I came from a very loving family. I'm sure we'll talk about my family and upbringing a little bit later, but um, I came from a very loving family, but I also came from a family that I felt did not prepare me all that well to enter adulthood. They did not prepare me with a lot of life skills. And so that actually has been a central focus of my daddyhood, you could say. Yeah, we've been we've been really focused on preparing our children. We're all constantly reminding them, um, you know, giving them more and more responsibilities as they age. With understanding that there's, you know, you go from twelve to thirteen, that's like kind of a step up in the responsibility chain. For example, I constantly remind them, you know, in Jewish culture, you'd be a man right now, right? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> how are you intentional about? kind of connecting the dots to adulthood and um, preparing him uh, by teaching him lessons now. Yes. Yeah. So, um, well, I mentioned, you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, when I say responsibilities, obviously that means chores in in one aspect, but it also means um, us helping our children to recognize what they're gifted at, and also listening to them. What are you interested in? What kinds of things do you want to try? And being open to those things, but then holding them to a measure of responsibility. For example, if you're going to commit, if you're going to join the swim team, well, we got to make sure we finish out the season and, and, and not find out two weeks in that you don't really like it that much. And pull it, right, that's a commitment that you're making to your team, to your coach and what have you and uh, teaching them uh, uh, those types of things. There have been a couple of other specific ways, though, that we've 
we've tried to kind of uh, call them into another step towards adulthood. And I was very impacted by a, a program from about 20, uh, 25 years ago called Men's Fraternity. Uh, uh, I think it's gone through many iterations by now, but I, I was influenced. It's kind of a Christian uh, uh, biblical manhood type of pr uh, program with, with many uh, sessions and that type of thing. And I, I'll tell you, I was impacted for myself realizing how much uh, a lot of stuff that I had to be thankful for with my parents and specifically my father, but also a lot of areas that I had no clue about. You know, I, I can imagine a lot of dad, my dad was a very quiet man. He was he was pretty expressive. He told me he loved me. He told me he was proud of me, which was, I know a lot of a lot of men who have never heard any of those words from their own father. Um, but at the same time, my father had a lot of anxiety, inner anxiety, unspoken anxiety, and was kind of afraid to get into the world a little bit, to interact with the world. He was, uh, and uh, I, I really, I reacted, I think, against that a little bit as I got older, realizing, you know what, maybe the world is not quite as scary a place as they were making it out to be. And 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 going ahead and taking a chance, going ahead and, and trying for some goals that I had through music and what, what have you. So those are those are areas that I try to impart to my children. In American culture, we have no ceremonies that mark the transition from one aspect of childhood into the next you know step towards adulthood and there are other cultures around the world that celebrate this i just mentioned one earlier the bar mitzvah for example or the bat mitzvah uh, in jewish culture where at 13 you know you're really kind of called into manhood uh, or womanhood at that point in, in latino culture mexican culture they have the quincein quinceanera which is uh, 15 year old girls, for example, are now called into womanhood. And it's a, it's a very powerful ceremony. And what this program made me realize is, wow, when you mark it with a ceremony, when you invite uh, people over, friends, family over to celebrate this person, those are memories that you never, ever forget. Mm. And so we've done that with, uh, with my uh, children. And usually the ceremony will be a kind of a short, you know, uh, thing where we invite friends, make some food, and then just kind of uh, let our children know what the next step. We, we kind of honor them for who they are and what they've accomplished already and what they're good at. We kind of brag about them. But then we also are challenging them, calling them into the step of what they're about to expect in the next phase of their development. And then we top it off with usually some kind of fun activity just with either me or my or, or my spouse. You know, so if it's my daughter, it's it's with mom. If it's the boy, they're gonna come with me. And oftentimes we go to a we go to Chicago, we go to a hotel, stay at a hotel overnight. I've taken them to medieval times, for example, or we go to a ball game together and we just spend time and we just have fun. That is powerful. That's fantastic. Now, you mentioned your mom and dad earlier. So as far as especially your dad, but your parents in general, what are some like bits and pieces of legacy that they've passed on to you that you've grabbed a hold of and you've you've been running with? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I uh, again, I mentioned a couple of the shortcomings of my father, but I want to make sure that the audience knows. I mean, I have a, a deep respect and love for my both of my parents, they both passed on uh, now. Uh, my dad was a, uh, a very quiet man, uh, originally from Puerto Rico, uh, but he had a great sense of humor. He had a passion for music. In fact, I'd say I got the music gene from him. Uh, he uh, he was uh, even though he wasn't a professional singer full time, he actually worked for IBM for thirty years. He did. He, he was passionate about singing and Latin music. And so he actually sang with a few bands in the Austin, Texas area where I grew up. And so I would follow him uh, when I was getting kind of teen years 
on some of his gigs, for example. And when I started playing, I actually started coming and sitting in on some of the rehearsals for, for those bands, which was a real bond that we had. Mm -hmm. He absolutely loved sports. Uh, he loved all sports, but especially baseball. That was his, his true love. And so we'd always look forward every year. We couldn't afford to go a lot of games uh, being from Austin. We'd, and we'd have to drive either to Houston for the Astros games or to uh, Arlington and Dallas for the Texas Rangers games. But we usually do that once a year as a family go. And, uh, and so I got into sport. That was a way, he was such a quiet man that that was a way that he and I could bond and could relate. So I really got into uh, sports and kind of developed a love for sports uh, myself. And we've talked a lot about kind of how you've been reaching down to your children as far as legacy goes. Uh, apart from the Enneagram stuff and preparing for adulthood, what are some other legacy type things that you think you are passing on to your kids? Yeah. Well, I truly believe that faith is number one. Uh, and the reason is because you know, what you believe about yourself, why you're here, um, what you're here for, uh, why anything exists at all. You know, what, how you answer that, how you respond to that affects all the other decisions that you make in your life, right? And so uh, for me, that, that path was, was through following, becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. And, um, but I will say that even with my children, it, it's kind of unusual to me that, you know, I, I grew up, in a in a in a family that was somewhat religious i i, I could say um but uh faith really became my own as a 25 year old that's really when i kind of converted you could say um before that my my religion was music you know mm -hmm. i encourage my children to explore their own faith i encourage them to ask questions I encourage them even to to challenge and if they have doubts to express them like that's that's something it's, it's kind of unusual for me because I had to I think everybody has to kind of walk through their own uh, uh, path and do their own you know investigation and, and research and my children are no different just because they're born in my house you know uh, so I the more than anything I try to exemplify uh, grace I try to exemplify and, 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 and we, we do, we do encourage them. We do read the Bible. We do pray together and that type of thing. At our heart, at our core, us men tend to be selfish, right? We, we, we want to kind of think first and foremost about number one, right? And so it's like being married and having children that really, really kind of stretches us and teaches us. Oh yeah, I've actually got to give of my life, of my sweat, of my energies uh, to cu to cultivating these relationships and and letting them blossom like like plants. You know, uh, I had a pastor who defined love as doing what's best for the other person, regardless of what it costs you. Mm. I always thought that was a very powerful uh, 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 way of looking and defining love you know and I, of course that's a two-way that's a two-way street right like you know both parties in a relationship if you're both doing that i think you're going to be in good shape you know so how have you gotten to where you are now as a dad um because you've uh, honestly i'm sitting here and i'm like man he's got so much wisdom i i just i want that so how have you gotten to this point um in in daddyhood oh boy it's a day by day process. I will say that I, I, you know, you're now I've been a, I've been a dad, obviously, for 18 years now, uh, as of yesterday. Oof. And um, that's that's 18 years worth of mistakes where I, I can, you know, I think this is very common, but, you know, we're like we're like different parents with our other children than we were with our firstborn right like like when you're first born you know they sneeze you call an ambulance you know you're, you're like oh, you're totally on edge you're totally you know you know now it's like they could be playing with fire and it's just roll them around a little bit it'll be okay you know? <laughs> <laughs> but those are the things you go through you know we're gonna make mistakes as dads uh i certainly have made my my share as well you learn from those mistakes and you talk about them 
That's a huge one. Mm. Don't let your ego get in the way and your pride get in the way just because your dad maybe had that stoic, uh, you know, you know, statuesque type of approach with you. It just kind of, you know, was was not very emotionally expressive with you. No, when I when I wrong my children, when I raise my voice at them or or what what have you, it's like I, I come back, I apologize when cooler heads prevail. And I, I tell them exactly what was wrong with, with, with what happened with me, you know. And uh, when you do that in relationships, um, they respond. They, they do respond. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's, some, it's, a, it's a way that our children can feel safe, you know, with us. What I, what, you know, the advice I would have is, is it's just really important that you have moments where you shut off the screens. If, if that sounds too tough, do it for 10 minutes and talk with your children. Go for a walk with your children. You know what I mean? Go to the park, give them a little treat, you know, somewhere else. But, but uh, that's, that's such a key that we can't lose this idea of relationship and, and, and person to person type of, and not only just person to person, but as a family. You know, it's tough, but we have to actually uh, select times where we come together as a family. Family meeting time. We don't do it every day, necessarily. We probably should, but we don't do it every day. It's not like that. But when both my wife and I just noticed, wow, 15 hours on screens today, and they just there's like no sign of ending. No, no, no. Screens off. Everybody, let's go to the living room. Sometimes it just involves singing. Sometimes it just involves talking about your day or or talking about something fun that they would be into. Like, like one time I just asked my children, what's your favorite amusement park memory that you have? You know, which ride? And boy, just, just asking that question, we were talking there for like an hour and a half, just recalling all of the fun trips we've taken and everything. Just something little like that can really help us to to maintain that relational bond. That is just fantastic. And I love I, roller coasters are great anyway. So that one of those would win for me, but I'm going to uh, fast forward for a moment. We're going to close with this question because we've, we've been chock full of like wisdom and uh, just uh, legacy and just more or less serious things. I wanted to ask you this because you have 18 years worth of, of uh, material to sift from Tito. What is your most embarrassing daddyhood moment? Ever. Oh boy, uh, that's kind of a tough one, you know, because I'm you. kind of a cool jazz musician. So there is one instance that I do uh, remember <laughs> that was uh, embarrassing, but now it's kind of funny. Um, it, this was the first time I was taking my firstborn on a plane, and it was just going to be uh, he and I. Now he, we would have been around eighteen months uh, at this point. Right. So he was walking, even, you know, starting to run and stuff like that. Um, but he was little and uh, it was it, he was under two. So that means that you don't need to buy an extra seat, but he can just stay on, on my lap. So I was already I, we were flying from uh, uh, from Chicago to, to Dallas, which is like a two and a half hour flight. And I'm thinking, oh man, two and a half hours. <laughs> how, is, how is this going to go? Is my, you know, young dad, all that, you know. And amazingly enough, he he slept most of the trip, right right on me like that, and it, it was totally cool. But I bought uh, a bowl of grapes. I just I bought a bowl of grapes uh, right before I was little. I uh, just wanted a snack for the for the trip. And uh, he started. He woke up and he was just going. He saw the grapes and he just started popping them in there, one by one, and he kept going, one by one. One by one. And I look over, he, he's almost polished off the whole bowl. I'm like, oh, what, what are you doing? I guess he was hungry. And so we get to Dallas, we get off the plane, and there's just this wide open space. Now, we've been locked in this tiny cabin, right, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, plane. And now there's this wide open space. And he just starts running like crazy. It was his first, like, instinct to start running 
and there's just great barf everywhere. <laughs> you know, he just like, explodes. <laughs> he just explodes, and uh, you know everybody's kind of looking. You know, there was like nobody else around, but everybody's looking. You know, from from afar, and I'm like, oh man, there was there's a <laughs> first really embarrassing dad moment right there. So. Man, the grapes of wrath. I don't know that. Oh, that that's nasty. <laughs> Well, Tito, we are so honored and pleased and just excited that you've been able to be a part of this episode of Daddyhood Rocks with us. Uh, you, you're just a, uh, you're a good friend. Uh, you're a brother in Christ, and uh, just, just your your warmth and your your humor it just really lends to to for one being a great guest, just being a great guy. Uh, any before we wrap up, any last words that you'd want to put on the table for our listeners before we close shop? You know, never stop learning about what it means to be a great dad, especially if you didn't have a great example mm. of that. You know, I know, Brandon, your your boys are our little boy. It's just going to be it's amazing what can happen in five years, 10 years. You know, all of a sudden they've caught up to you here, you know, and 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 to, that, that to, doesn't take much, by the way. It's, all right. <laughs> but uh, but just keep keep learning we never stop learning about what it means to be a dad and i i would say that continues even into adulthood right where we our role changes where we're no longer um the supervisor you know looking up we're now mentor we're now a mentor to our children and they're going to make now their mistakes cost thousands of dollars <laughs> as opposed to right and and but we need to be there to to, to support them and help them right and then the last thing I want to say, especially if you think that you maybe you've dropped the ball as a dad or you, 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 you feel ill-equipped, you're never going to go wrong with just dedicated quality time with your children. Mm. That's something you can do tomorrow, you know, just uh, pulling your child, even if it's short, even if it's for 30 minutes, an hour uh, something like that. Go, go, go buy them a Starbucks or, or if you don't want caffeine, you know, you know what I mean? McDonald's, whatever, but you know, just be with them and, and try to engage them in things that they're interested in and, 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 and talk, talk about that. Uh, in addition to giving the lessons and finding those little areas where you can do some teachable moment moments if it's all teachable moments all the time soon they're gonna they're gonna tune you out right they gotta know that you care about them yes. as people right yeah without a doubt well tito thank you and definitely as we are you know this is a you know brand new territory for us uh season one of daddyhood rocks uh d definitely filling out space for the the you know the end of the season and then heading towards season two uh coming up uh in in the fall we'd love to have you again because you, you're just so full of, of wisdom and 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 just brilliance so thank you tito i hope you have a wonderful evening and best of luck in being safe in this COVID palooza that we're all a part of brandon john thank you so much for having me it was uh truly a great experience for me i look forward to listening to other episodes on your podcast i think you're you're doing amazing work and filling an incredible niche that needs to be filled so thank you again and i would love to come back at some point fantastic all right take care tito All right, thank you very much for uh, listening to Tito Carrillo. Uh, Brandon, wow. Um, I mean, I think just, I'm speechless. He's he's amazing, he's loving, he's caring, but he's so intentional with his kids. And oh, yeah. um, speaking of being intentional, um, we have been intentionally trying to grow this podcast in a number of ways. And so, uh, we've actually been able to partner with Adventure Challenge, um, which if you don't know them, please go to their website, adventurechallenge.com. Um, look them up. As a dad, I can say these things are the coolest things in the world. Um, and it gives you an opportunity. We talk about leveling up. This is leveling up. And so we've partnered with Ad Adventure Challenge and 
um, I'm so excited about it. Brandon, uh, tell us more. Dude, well, first of all, they have different uh, focal, focal points. So there, there's the Adventure Challenge for families, Adventure Challenge for couples, Adventure Challenge uh, for friends, which is really cool. So wherever you're at, uh, there's uh, an Adventure Challenge book for you. And it's really neat because it's, it, it's scratch off. So you open up the book and there are little descriptors uh, throughout the book about the, uh, the surprise challenge. And so you kind of look at the descriptors and make sure it matches what, you know, time and cost you're willing to do that day, uh, kind of what the resources you need. Uh, but you can do them all from home. You, you scratch off like a lottery ticket and it tells you what the adventure challenge is. And man, the, the coolest one that we did as a family was called the cat burglar. And the, the materials needed was a, a, a thing of yarn and a spray bottle. And so we, uh, used almost an entire uh, skein of yarn, uh, looped it all the way through our living room, over things, under things. Uh, it, it was hilarious. And so then it was a timed challenge where uh, each of us would try to, it was like an obstacle course, but with yarn. And, uh, you know, our, our two boys would go. Uh, and then if you, but if anyone touches the yarn, uh, the outsiders can spray them with a spray bottle like you'd spray a cat. And, uh, and so all of us were relatively drenched by the time it was done, but, uh, we laughed so hard as a family and it was, it was hilarious. And, uh, I mean, the boys just thought it was the coolest adventure ever. And so that's my favorite. There are some others that are really cool too, but I want to encourage you to go to the website, adventurechallenge.com. And if you want a 10% discount on any of their products, uh, go ahead and use our code, which is daddyhood. Uh, as you're checking out and that will get you that 10 percent discount highly recommend it especially heading into the new year and through january february a lot of fun stuff to do here in in winter and spring so john are you going to do the adventure challenge i am and i also wanted to mention you mentioned those focal points um they're solo adventure challenge books mm -hmm. i mean so for our dads who are single dads or um, dads who have kids every other weekend they need something to do pick up a solo book too. I mean, do, do something for you. Don't just sit around anymore. Uh, you know, this is something you can level up your own life while you level up your ability to father. And so awesome. I think this gives you the, um, the ability to do that. It's not that this is the ability to do that, but it gives you another um, outlet to do that. Oh yeah. And it is, it is so fun and it really makes you tap into your creative side of your brain and uh, and i think there are some laughs guaranteed with this stuff with that said another guarantee is the daddy hood rocks podcast is going to keep on rocking and rolling we are so pumped about this we're so excited to be able to serve dads of any sort new dads young dads extra dads uh, dads who are for the first time maybe engaging and really getting active in their children's lives whatever kind of dad you are, or even if you're, if you're a mom, a single mom, and you want to encourage the men in your life, this podcast is for you. We're here for you. So I encourage you to, you know, in whatever podcast uh, platform you use, go ahead and subscribe, uh, comment, rate us, and we would love to, to take this journey with you. All right. So let us know what other topics you'd like to hear as we keep on moving forward. Here is Daddyhood Rocks.